Hi, and welcome to An Emo Girl's Guide to the Galaxy, where we debate, rant, and curse too much. If you like books, sarcasm, and hate the patriarchy, then you've come to the right place. Hey everyone, it's Devin. I am going to kick off what everyone has been up to this week, so I will just start off by saying that I finished my arc of Claire Legrand's um, <gasps> upcoming Ooh. adult Aww. fantasy series. It's called A Crown of... Glass and Ivy? Ivy and Glass? I don't know. <laughs> I forget the name. It's a crown of something and Ivy, and it's actually really good. I liked it yeah. a lot, and she markets it as A Court of Thorns and Roses meets Bridgerton. Um, I would say you don't get to the Court of Thorns and Roses part until maybe midway through, but it is there, so there are fairies, there are demons, there are monsters and Aww. magical creatures, and... It's everything that you would expect from a Claire book, like, if you have read her other stuff. Um, What's the page It level? has... Not that bad. Okay. Um, it has a lot of characters that are, like, suffering from mental illnesses and actual illnesses and mm-hmm. how they power through it and how... That's um, cool, though. These, yeah, it's... It, mental health, all of that stuff, like, it's what you would expect because that's what she does in her young adult yeah. books, but I feel like it's just on a deeper level yeah. because it's for adults, so you can understand it a little bit more clearly. Um, mm-hmm. And there is some smut in it, mm-hmm. so for anybody wondering, I, I wouldn't say it's, like, the spiciest thing in the world, but there is, I was like, whoa, Claire, I didn't know you can write like this. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but I enjoyed it. I'm excited. I can't believe I have to wait until, like, May 2023 for the oh first God. book to actually come out. And then I don't even know about book two or book three. Um, but it follows three sisters, so obviously very, yeah. like, in line with A Court of Thorns and Roses and the main character and her siblings. Um, but, yeah, I'm excited. I'm gonna just keep talking about it until May. I'm excited, too. What about you, Jess? Um, so I did. <laughs> what have I been up to? So I went to Zoo Lights this week and like ran around and did Aww. like the getting to be Christmassy stuff. Like they're the all the stuff is lit up, and so that's really fun and exciting. Um, but the more fun thing I did is yesterday. So my friend and I turned thirty five this year, and we're feeling old, and so. <laughs> We decided to do rent the runway dresses and we rented ball gowns and then we went to like a color installation Instagram type building thing and we had a photographer go with us and our friends in like full blown ball gowns and I wore combat boots obviously with the ball gown (laughs) and uh, (laughs) took a whole bunch of crazy weird friend photos and like she had a crown on for her birthday and there was a giant like massive adult sized ball pit and so I was just floating in a giant ball pit with a freaking ball gown (laughs) on which was you know I recommend to everyone so we had sounds weird but I like it fun um just, you know, and everybody's like, what are you guys doing in these full dresses? And we're like, we're old and we wanted Living to take life, a photo shoot my because <laughs> who cares? So, yeah, that's, that's, fun, that's what I did <laughs> yesterday. Nice. <laughs> that's cool. It was fun. And I Love am it. not good at the photos, so it was nice to have somebody offering direction to me. Oh, to tell yeah. me exactly what to do. Dev did that for me when I was there, which I appreciated. I was like, we need video. Um, what about you, Loretta? Well, I have been um, just hanging out. I we had a our town had a Christmas tree lighting and stuff with fireworks and all this stuff. So my mom and I went to that yesterday, and it was really fun. Um, they had like <laughs> they had like a talent thing i don't know if it was it wasn't karaoke but it sounded like karaoke but it was these kids and they went up and they sang christmas songs and it was absolutely terrible and i loved it (laughs) that sounds amazing and it was (laughs) this girl sang all i want for christmas and she was vibing she was into it though but she was sounded (laughs) terrible and i was like i love you so much you're killing it (laughs) 10 out of 10 (laughs) all i want for christmas oh yeah it was great um And then I found this app recently called Pango Books, and it's basically just an app where you can sell your used, like your used books. And so I don't know why finding that app. Um, I used it to buy, uh, 
King of Battle and Blood because I I pre-ordered um Queen of Myth and Monsters in paperback and I was like I need a paperback to match the paperback because I had the anyway it was the whole thing so I use that's how I found it and then I so I've been going through my books and I've been selling them which I'm really proud of myself about I saw that in your notes and I was like I think this is a sign that I also need to get on here and start selling my books yeah I don't know why I've been like I've I have felt the need to purge like I have Dune when am I ever gonna read fucking Dune never (laughs) never (laughs) So I, I I'm gonna li- I'm gonna list some stuff that I don't need. I I put the um I'm gonna put the first Bridgerton book on there because I like to pretend it doesn't exist. Yeah, agreed. So yeah, that's what I've been doing. Cool. Good times. Yeah. I love that I'm the one introducing our main topic because we all know I'm the one who's most obsessed. This is, with. Uh, this is your vibe. We're ready. This is my time. Um, we're talking about Twilight today, so. I'm pretty stoked. <laughs> I uh, I temporarily lost my mind during COVID like we all did. And I reread the first one. So I have my annotated movie tie-in edition paperback for this recording today to I've reference. I've never been happier than to hear that you annotated a movie copy of Twilight. It just, oh, yeah. I, I couldn't find... I used to have all of the Twilight books in hardcover, mm-hmm. like the first editions, because I was obsessed with this series in high school. And I don't know, we moved and stuff, and I couldn't find them. So I was like, obviously, I need the movie editions instead of the OG editions. Obviously. And it was, I think, the best decision that I've ever made. I mean... Yes. My fourth book has the creepy Renesame on it, so I love it. A CGI baby? Unfortunately, no. It's young Renesame, but oh. I wish it were the CGI baby. That would be spectacular, honestly. The special edition white set box set is actually really pretty, and I've had to talk myself I off know. the ledge to like not buy them just to look at them, even though I don't really want them. Like I'll never do anything with them. <laughs> Literally the same. Except I've done the for same just thing. Have them be on my shelves. Like I see them when I'm scrolling on like bookstore <laughs> websites, and I'm like. Do I get them? And I'm like, no, it's fine. It's fine. There's something about Twilight. It's iconic. So to have a set wouldn't be terrible. Like, we all know it's bad, but it still draws us all in. I know that I've talked about this story plenty of times, but I'm going to bring it up again because there's never enough times. But I have an issue with Twilight because the friend in high school, who's no longer my friend, I should have realized red flag number one, pitched (laughs) this to me as the coolest vampire story ever and how she gets powers and there's like all of these cool vampire powers and I'm like okay cool and I'm sitting here reading through like three books before anything happens and I'm reading a love triangle and we all know how much I hate love triangles and I just felt really betrayed and I was like wow I wasted my time I was uh, triggery I was deceived so if you're out there listening to this just know that I still feel betrayed after all these years (laughs) She has never forgiven you and never will. So. Yeah. No. <laughs> I will hold a grudge for the rest of my time on Earth. Like, <laughs> I hate I Twilight. Op- I ha- <laughs> Thank I you. I had the exact opposite experience, which is hilarious, because I fought reading these books for so long, and I was like, a girl falls in love with a vampire? That sounds so stupid. And then I finally caved, because literally everyone was oh. talking about them. And so I caved, I read it, and I absolutely went ape shit over it. <laughs> and I was like, this is the best. And then I went out, when I first read them, all three books were out. The first three books were out. So I, I read the first one. I ran out. I bought the other two. I read those in like a day. And then I had to wait a year for Breaking Dawn, which ruined I, it. But. I, mean, I think that I said this in like last season or something, but... My mother's the one that had me reading these because my mom was reading them because everybody was. And I came home from college and she's like, you have to read this. It's wonderful. You're going to love it because you love Harry Potter. And I was like, these are not the same thing, first of all. But also, I was an English major, like reading classics, being snotty. And then Twilight came along and I hated every (laughs) second of it. But I love to hate it because like it's. It's done a lot for YA and books and just like yeah. making things acceptable. We appreciate and we appreciate it, but yeah. like at the same time for a lot of things. But it's really awful. But like in it's a, terrible. It's it's so bad that it's like camp. And I think the funny part is I saw somebody talking about it 
the other day that on TikTok or something that was like all of these Gen Zs uh like watching Twilight now and being like, oh my gosh, that's so camp. That's so cool. They don't understand that it wasn't for us. We took it seriously. <laughs> it wasn't camp. We just thought that was our like We thought art, that was great. Pure art. I know. <laughs> So we now they're like, oh my gosh, you guys are Edward. so funny. And it's like, no, it wasn't a parody, though. That's the worst part about it. Thank you for thinking we're funny, <laughs> but we aren't. It's actually oh, a, a tragedy. Yeah, it's, it's just <laughs> it like, paved the way for the Hunger Games, and did. that's, you know, all I care about. Yeah. It paved the way for Josh YA. Hutcherson as PETA. Oh, you know? We love it. Thank, thank we you, love Twilight, it. for giving us Josh Hutcherson <laughs> as PETA. Honestly, though, yeah. yeah, seriously. Josh Hutcherson. All of the other vampire books that came out that we love. That- well, and just like YA in general was like given so much to do and it made it like okay for fantasy to be fun. Like the Sarah Jenkins yeah. and JLAs of the like world is are like. I didn't really read a whole lot of. Too. Yeah, I didn't really read a whole lot of YA romance before, right. so I don't know. But it, to me, it feels like it. It paved the way for like a lot of the YA romance we have now. It made it a lot bigger and more widely acceptable. Yeah, like, and it's more acceptable for us to just read trashy romance and not care anymore. Where, so Stephanie Meyer did do that, which for I us. think is ironic because she's trying to push like Mormonism on everybody. Oh, it makes yep. me so angry. It's so religious. It's weird. Yeah, like anybody who that says it, it doesn't. It's have weird it. that it had that effect. Yeah, because I don't think anybody caught on to that well, when you're reading it. it. Like I, I didn't in high school. No. I don't remember reading about Bella wearing like khaki ankle <laughs> skirts. Like I don't. I know. Yeah, like in my happened. head, she wasn't wearing that, so I don't know. She wears that, and then she comes downstairs, and he's like, "You look amazing," and I'm see like, your "Does ankles. she?" <laughs> well, to be fair, he is like a hundred something years old, and he was. Like, used to people yeah. covering up all the time. But, like, he lived through the 100 year old virgin and stuff. So, there's no excuse for floor-length khaki skirts. Sometimes I think about that. Sometimes I think about Edward in different eras. Yeah. Like, he lived through that. And I don't... He lived through the 80s. I don't understand. And he's okay with khaki skirts. I don't know. I don't get it. Sometimes I think about that. Sometimes I just sit around and think <laughs> about Edward I do. I'm not gonna lie. It doesn't. It her outfits don't seem like they are very conducive to the weather where she lives. Absolutely like, not. And she's so com- she complains about. And it's she cold. She complains about and the you're cold telling me you're not time. wearing like puffy sweaters. Like they have warm clothes, and you're not like taking advantage of like. And then she complains Columbia about the weather jackets. You're right. You know, yeah. And honestly, like a long khaki skirt. First of all, it's going to show the rain. You're in a cold place where it rains a lot. There's going to be puddles. You're going to have just like a wet khaki hem. And there's nothing yeah. really worse than that, probably. That's like my life wearing flare pants and walking through the rain and being just yeah. freaking miserable because you're wet up to your knees. Like, of course you are. You wore the wrong fucking thing. Yeah. This is really random and not at all what we're talking about right now, but I wanted to shout out this girl because um, <clears throat> we were talking about covers earlier. Oh, yeah. And this girl I follow called Caddy Video, K-A-D-I Video on Instagram. She makes all, she redoes a bunch of covers of movies and she makes VHSs of them, which is like really fucking dope. Mm-hmm. And she did VHS covers for Twilight, but she made them book covers and they're so cool and I want to buy, like I have to talk myself out of buying yeah, them all the time. Awesome. I'm like, don't do it because then you'll have to buy the hard covers for the covers and you don't want to do that. But anyway, <laughs> but also, kind of want to do I love that. them so much. <laughs> That's amazing. That's such a cool concept yeah. too. I want to see. We I know she's bringing VHS out. back, which I appreciate. We need to link that out. Because I, I want to provide the link. Mostly yes. because I want the link. And so other people don't have the link, <laughs> but I definitely want it. She has a post about it, so oh. I'll, I'll link the post. I but yeah, I, re- I reread this during quarantine and it's like, it's wild. Like, I was so into this in high school, but then I reread it and like half of the book is just her doing normal things, like 
Bella's going to school now, and then she goes to the grocery store, and then she makes dinner, and then she does her homework, and I'm like, what? Why yeah. did I find this riveting? When I, I was also feel 16? like I've only maybe read it once or twice. Like I don't even think after the first time I was like, I need to read these over again, maybe just mm-hmm. to see the movies. But I remember being so. I did that with the other ones. I didn't do that with this one. She spends half of one of the books like being depressed and like wanting to commit suicide, uh-huh. like. Okay. It's so weird. And that was the literally the only part of the movie that Kristen Stewart, like, did a good job on because I feel like those are, like, the only types of characters that she's, like, really good at playing. Where no, she just, like, I agree sits there and does yeah. nothing. Like, she has a blank stare and she's like, I want to die. Like The infamous, like, circular pan or whatever. Uh-huh. Yeah, where September, she's sitting in front of the window. There's a possibility. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. So I remember watching or like reading those books and thinking, this is so unrealistic because uh, (laughs) the, well, not because of the vampires, but because like she's just allowed to go prom dress shopping in another city with a bunch of people she doesn't know. And they're like, yeah, just get in the car and go. Yeah. It's like 45 minutes to this other place. Charlie's like, yeah, sure. And then she doesn't even come home with her friend. She comes home with this other guy who sits and watches her eat by herself in a restaurant and like. The whole thing made me go like, no, that doesn't, that's not how that works. Like, and maybe for some people, yeah. But like for me in my, like, and I was in college by then, but like in high school, no chance ever would I have been allowed to like leave 45 minutes away with strangers to like go buy a prom dress to a dance I don't want to go to and then eat mushroom risotto because I'm a vegetarian. With some guy. (laughs) With some guy I don't know. <laughs> and then him, like, try to save them from... Doesn't he, like, try to save her from some other people and then drive like an absolute lunatic? And she's like, I'm gonna die in this car. I don't... Yeah, she's almost, like, gang raped or and something. And he's like, yeah. and But he's like, oh, don't worry. I'll just buy you some mushroom risotto to get you over it. I... That was weird, yeah. She goes through this traumatic thing and he's like, you need to drink this Coke. <laughs> immediately and i'm gonna watch you do it you're in shock and she's like no i'm not in shock and i'm like you should be in shock you are be you in okay shock. and she's like i don't know what happened they really saw my ankles and were like that girl <laughs> in an alleyway i just the whole thing <laughs> take the vampire out of it it's just something else i think about from time to time is i reread this book and i did not realize that carlisle was 23 when he was turned so he's 23 yeah. I didn't know that. It, he's a 23 year old. It blows my. I read it and I was like, 23? They're, he's 23. And they're marketing <laughs> him as like an adoptive parent of a bunch of teenagers. And I like. Who are also, like, the teenagers are also married to each other secretly. Like, yeah. okay, got yeah. it. I never really understood it's so weird. how that worked uh, with the, like, they were allowed to be dating because they were adopted or something, and it was totally fine with everybody in the school. It was the most conf- uh, uh, complicated I just, story. I, it didn't make sense. And they're like, but Edward's no. too good for everybody else. The others, they date each other only. And I'm like, that doesn't seem odd to you? That doesn't throw a red flag? <laughs> What yeah. bothers me most, though, is that I read this in high school and I I was like, yes, 23 is a perfectly acceptable age to have a bunch of grown teenage children. <laughs> that is totally adult. And then now I'm like, what? That's a ba- that's baby age. <laughs> they could all be siblings. Like me and my younger sister are like, what, six yeah. to seven? Yeah. Like we're around the same age gap that he would have been with the other. With his children. With, with, the, ch- with the children, yeah. I'm uncomfortable. I mean, I feel like it's just a study in making people uh, uncomfortable. Like, it's almost a social experiment. It's like, how can we make these teenagers, like, and parents were, my mom read this and was like, you should read this. This is solid literature. (laughs) The publishers didn't read that. Like, her editor didn't read. She had multiple people reading her story before they published it. No one thought to say, like, maybe we ate them up a little bit. Maybe... Not all or, of, like, yeah. some of them can be in college, and, like, Carlisle could be maybe, like, Wait, in his 30s. Like, that's what I don't get. I don't know like, why they didn't everybody do literally High read school? this and said, yes, this is gold. Ship it. Yes, I know, that's what bothers dad. me. <laughs> 23-year-old dad, the kids are gonna love it. Uh, okay, I also have to say that uh, when it comes to the movies, Taylor Lautner is so significantly hotter than our pats in this movie. Like, in general, yes. I love our pats. Don't get me wrong. As Batman, 
perfect gold. I was gonna say but, like, we love him as Batman, no but that took competition. He aged into it, Batman, though. You know what I mean? Like, right? He did. He aged into it. Edward, yeah, him as Edward then was not. It was not it. When she's running towards him and he's shirtless, no, it's not it. Let's, let's have a moment for like the haircut. This is the one cutting of hair thing that I'm okay with. Is in the movies when they cut Taylor Lautner's hair, it aged Ugh, him up. Yeah, because his wig was trash. <laughs> it was but so it also, bad. It also made him. So so much hotter and look so much older at the same time and you're like whoa what happened there that yeah. the difference that that worked whatever you just did that worked uh it was glorious honestly uh so that was that was a moment yeah that poor kid though that wig was really bad i have to shout out uh, my old roommate and i watched um I it happened on accident because we put on Twilight and then I was trying to find the subtitles and I accidentally put it in French. <laughs> and then we started watching it in French and we were like, "Oh my god, this is like why is this better?" And so we watched the entire thing in French and it like they have different voice actors. Yeah. Like, because, you know, they're French. So it made it better somehow because the voice actors were better actors than they are. I don't know. So we watched the whole thing in French and we were like, what other languages can we do? And then we watched it in Spanish. And that was also amazing. So I recommend that to everybody because that was an experience. That when the, Jacob great. is like, adios, Bella. <laughs> and then he leaves. <laughs> it was the best thing I've ever heard in my life. So, uh, yeah, I need that in my life. That sounds wonderful. And the voice actors do a better job. So sure props do. to them. It can't be too hard, honestly. Yeah. Also, just thinking about it now, like, I don't know. What did the, and either of them see in Bella? Because, like, no one she knows. was boring. She had She's no boring personality. As fuck. She was boring, but she was uh, made to make all teenage girls feel like they're okay. But, like, Teenage girls need more credit because teenage girls are way cooler than whatever Bella is. Teenage, teenage girls, girls are, are not yeah. boring. No, I don't remember me or my really friends fun. being that boring. Exactly. They weren't bland. No. They didn't give her. We had personalities. They, give, they don't give teenage girls enough credit because, like, they're fun as hell, sassy, entertaining, better dressed than most of us. That's yep. that's the truth. Teenage girls deserve more credit. But yeah, D- Bella was or, like, if that's what you think of me. Although, I mean, if we go back to the religious thing, it might be that that's what she thought teenage girls were supposed to be and was, that's like, true. putting this stereotype into yeah, her probably. book that's, like, a good Mormon girl would do X, Y, Z, and she oh, yeah, would never talk back. Oh, yeah, you're seeing that. Shirt and skirts. Yeah. She wouldn't yeah. talk back. She wouldn't do this. And then, like, she would, you know. and Gross. then But then they also do the whole thing with the virginity situation where Edward's like, I'm not going to do that because of your soul. Even as a teen, that drove me nuts. Oh, my God. I was going crazy. And they make the woman into this, like, aggressive, I want to make my boyfriend have sex with me thing. And this guy's 120 years old and has never had sex. That was weird. Lies. First of all, lies. He's not concerned about anybody's soul. And, yeah, I just, it's bullshit. I don't like. I was more concerned about the fact that I was reading a love triangle story and not a (laughs) vampire story. So no, I got really mad about that part where they made her like the aggressor, and they were like, "She's just such a horny woman. She's gonna bring him down." Yeah, we need to stop with the weird, inappropriate like allegories. To did anybody confirm or deny if the story that she crafted Bella? based off of her and like edward based off of her brother because that's like another also weird what okay, I didn't yeah know about the brother there's thing. like yes i knew about her. which again cannot confirm Ooh, or deny what? i have not done research into this but i have heard slash yeah. read somewhere that she based edward off of like her brother oh my god are you kidding me <laughs> now i have to google it now i have to google this <laughs> She also swears that there's no religious basis to this and that she didn't Oh, please, let the, there's her, totally a religious basis. color her story. She swears. And I'm like, mm, oh, that, I think that's, grip. that's not true. Yeah. Because I can read with my eyes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I have eyeballs. Uh, yeah, basic human processes. I didn't know about the brother thing, though. That's icky. On that a whole is other gross. That but also, aware. it would not shock me. 
yeah at this time i do have to say that uh i've had I had been listening to a podcast like a year or so ago and uh, I'll link it below because it's a really good like series of deep dives into Twilight and the chaos of them. But it's uh, she was talking about the tribes and how Stephanie Meyer used a real tribe and based all of that off of a real tribe, but didn't give them any money or any support. At all whatsoever. So she used Ugh, their entire gross. culture and they never received a dime of payment for any Didn't of Didn't ask for permission or, or anything. anything. Right. So she just basically took everything about their history and they got Ew. nothing. So they got no money from the movies. They got no money from the books. Any of it. So. Oh, God. Something to be aware of is that Stephanie Meyer's trash and the pub, the production companies are trash because Not that i'm shocked i knew honestly, she was trash like, but it shouldn't that shouldn't happen that shouldn't be legal but it is no. i guess so i don't know just something to be aware of when we're make sure you buy secondhand stuff because <laughs> it's bad i yeah. just googled and apparently she named jacob after her one of her brothers too so jacob Gross. like she has what an actual hell? brother named jacob I, y'all we can i hate we that i hate that so do much anything else Besides, yeah. That. Why? Uh, and Ew. also, cannot confirm or deny. Don't m- mean to be the drama perpetuator, but I hear the stories. I you can look it up yourself. I <laughs> saw a video. Give us the tea. <laughs> I saw a video of somebody who said that she did wasn't comfortable with making any of her main characters people of color, and that the only reason oh, why. I'm not talking about that. What's his face? Um. The one with Jacob? the dreadlocks? No, he's oh, a, um, he's a yeah, the only black guy. Yeah, yes, uh, is because Laurent, he's a, Laurent. yes, and it's because he's a villain. Like she was like, okay, because he's a bad guy. Yeah, again, can't confirm or deny. I have not done my research. I I'm mean, just it's letting you know what I've heard. He's the only, he's the only black guy, and he's a bad guy. Me. I mean, she has a Confederate soldier as one of her main people. Yeah. Uh, so there's that whole weird. Thing. Yeah. Yeah, um, things that they should have changed, or just like anybody could have been like, "Hmm, this seems suspicious." Like so, so many things that uh, are I, absolutely um, wrong with Twilight. Yeah, <laughs> I used to be so Team Edward as a teenager. Yeah. I was like, "Oh my god, I love oh, Edward's the best. I love him." And then I reread this book, and I'm not Team anybody really team because Charlie. kind of Jacob is low key trash too. He like trash. forces a kiss on her, and she punches him, and he thinks it's funny. Like I don't know, it's so weird. It's all so yeah. fucking weird. I'm like, you're both you both suck, and she should blow both of you off. I'm Team Charlie. Yeah, I'm also Team Charlie. <laughs> potentially team rosalie even though i hated her rosalie before. i used to hate her too but i reread this and she's a badass she's bitch actually and I the love best her. she's like i will be mama bear for anyone it's kind of great yeah she killed her rapist in her wedding dress that is so fucking cool she is i need that book yeah that's that's the story we really want and it's wild because everybody thought she was the bad guy and a villain and like and I'm like, really, Stephanie Meyer? You couldn't have you know, made I hate her it. the hero? You brainwashed me. But she's actually the best. And she has the Golden Retriever boyfriend. It's perfect. She got herself it a really himbo. It really is. Crappy sunshine. Like, Emmett is one of the best for that. Like, I, I just, everybody's like, oh, Jasper. And I'm like, mm, I would go for the himbo. No. Like, I want the blockhead. <laughs> He's way more fun. He is. And Kellen Lutz is hot. In that movie. He is, yeah. He's Great. With his bag of hard-boiled eggs. <laughs> um, he's also in a movie called Stick It, and I love that movie. Uh, I love I that movie it. so much. Okay, I need to watch he that. also plays a himbo in that movie. You haven't seen it? Oh my god, it's so good. Movie? It sounds. Like it is a gymnastics, gymnastics movie, movie okay. and it's amazing. It's I love so it. good. I have probably seen that, but it's been. I'm gonna watch that later. Amongst now. the now rare that. like athlete sports movies that yeah. i actually enjoy stick it is one of them amazing also it's amazing. Uh, completely off track but whip it also amongst those <gasps> movies i love I, that movie too i don't think I, i've definitely not seen whip it oh it's good that one has um elliot page formerly oh. Elliot. yeah i was gonna say formerly ellen page but now elliot yes page. yeah i love it okay i would like to see that whip it whip it 
It made me want to be in a, um, what are they called? A roller derby. I have seen this Roller movie. derby. I've seen this movie. Yeah. That is a good movie. It made me want to be in a roller derby, which is not a good idea because I would die, but. Yeah. Uh, I have seen both of these movies. But just imagine if they made the Twilight baseball scene as a roller derby scene. Oh, like, I feel like we would have appreciated <laughs> that. I mean, as terrible as the movies are, we do, like, that baseball scene is forever in Iconic. Pain. And, like, Muse. I love that they have their own gear. They have, like, their own baseball gear. Like, you've done this enough to warrant making your own uniforms. jerseys. Like, you, full and uniforms. Hats. And pants. <laughs> and pants. Like, so serious. I don't understand. We take some time to appreciate that, like, continuing on with the themes, she had to choose baseball. Like, the American classic game. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, got it. Yeah, I know. It is really pukey when you think about pukey. When you think, it about makes me this, feel gross because I ate. It, I bought it. At least so they're much. not golfers because I don't know like, something. <laughs> something about golfers icks me. That would like, be hilarious me, though. I, I if you, you tell that. me that you're a golfer, it's automatically a red flag. I'm sorry to all you too, golfers yeah. out there, but like if you play golf, I can't. Same-sies. My husband I'm golfs, can't. and I agree that it is a red flag. <laughs> Honestly, it's expensive. It's it boring. boring. I don't. So I don't get boring. it. But okay. I don't understand it. I could go to Top Golf and wax some balls, but it's not going to look pretty. Yeah. Yeah. No. Well, no. I'm going to bring it back because I wanted to bring. I have to bring up. Uh, I can't. Ex- I can't describe enough how weird it was waiting all year for book four, and then opening it and reading a story about her being pregnant with a half vampire baby that shoots out of her stomach. It was so weird. Like, I don't under, I don't understand. I was reading it as a teen and I was like, what? And that was also where she lost me. That's what brought me out of it. I was like, wow, this is trash. That's what I, it feels like I was in a cult and then I finally saw the light or that something. I don't know. It was such a train wreck of epic proportions that like. It was so it was weird. Painful to read. And the fact that I finished it, honestly, I think that I deserve a medal. We all do. Edward goes so to bad. Jacob and he's like, hey, do you want to have some fun with my wife? Like, what? Ew. Do you remember that? Oh my god. No. It is so weird. It's so I just remember the the tent scene where they're all just like spiriting her away somewhere and he's like Oh you yeah, have that to, was an eclipse. You have to keep her warm and I'm like, this is That was weird. Okay. They have that whole conversation. Yeah. Get a sleeping about how bag. They both love her. Get an effing sleeping bag and some blankets and some North Face jackets. <laughs> yeah, like he's got all this money, but he can't buy some fucking blankets? I don't understand. And a heater? It. Buy a right? heater. Buy or anything. Really, honestly. No, in book four, Bella wants to keep the baby, which is its own, like, Gross. Sub- subliminal messaging. Gross. But anyway, um, Bella wants to keep the baby, and Edward's like, we have to get it out of you. It's going to kill you. And he's like, if you want a baby, you can have a baby. And then he, like, tries to talk Jacob into having some fun with her on the side, because if she wants a baby, he's like, oh, you can give her a baby. And I'm like, what the fuck? So weird. I don't remember that at <laughs> all, but that is that weird. Either. Is that really happening? I'm oh, yeah, glad they happens. took that out of the movie. Yeah, that happens. Wait, okay, so Jacob is like, oh, you mean I, I swear to God, fuck your wife? And have a baby. And Jacob is like, WTF, what is going on? Jeez. I think he, like, considers it for a second, too. And then yeah, he's like, no, this is weird. And him, I'm like, honestly. duh. <laughs> I'm so That's uncomfortable. too much. It's all weird. It it's happens. all so weird. And then he falls in love yeah. with the baby afterwards. The also weird. Is so messed up. But, like, the whole forcing her to have a that baby That entire book is bit, such a trip. The whole forcing her to have a baby bit made me so unreasonably angry and we all know that i don't really like baby storylines in books at all but that might be where it came from that might be my original reason i hate baby storylines i mean that would be understandable i'm gonna blame it on twilight even if it's all a giant metaphor i just it's forcing and especially in our you know what we're dealing with especially yeah current climate (laughs) uh it's going great in texas yeah so like living through that happening to us is so creepy to read books that are like oh look you could just force people to have babies you're like that could never happen oh oops it's happening 
And then it all leads up to a fight that is not a fight, and they just stand around in a field. Yes, for a few I hours hated that talk. so much. She's like, I'm <laughs> gonna protect everyone with my super cool powers that I don't have. Ugh, that I immediately know me. how to use. That was so I'm lame. Totally fine. I have the powers. I was like, I'm finally getting to the cool powers, and then she's just like, Oh, I can put up a force field. Okay. Yeah, that was so lame. They built it up so much, and then it was like, mm, I can only block mental powers, though. And she's I'm like, what the got fuck? All good of are you? Self control that no vampire has ever had, and she's like, oh, yeah, but I have self control. It's because I'm so happy. Bullshit. Yeah. Bullshit. It's so lame. Yeah. I love that was the one thing I did love about the movie though the the last movie or whatever because <laughs> I I've been I went to all the midnight showings of all the movies and we used to sneak booze in obviously um and uh, I remember being in the movie theater and in the movie they like psych everyone out and they like start attacking each other and then like carlisle's head gets ripped off and all these people die and everyone in the movie theater went apeshit they were like oh my god what's going on and then it turns out it's a vision alice has so it's not real but i was like i honestly that would have been for making this a little entertaining yeah i know go for it i would have appreciated a good vampire fight but we didn't get that no they just stood around in a big field and talked about their feelings i guess i don't know it really was so so disappointing all of it <laughs> yeah it comes down to the but at least it laid the groundwork for us to have good things later on i hate to give stephanie meyer any credit but i have to because whatever she did i mean she did pave the way it yeah. made this thing that we can then have later on so i don't know and if anybody is looking for a better vampire book that is Ooh. also by a person of color, I recommend The Beautiful. It's yes. YA. Oh, um, yeah. If you're looking for an adult vampire book, King of Battle and Blood, Blurred and I talk Absolutely. about it all the time. I read that one. Absolutely love it. It's good. It is great. The smut. The smut. You <laughs> definitely smut. have the smut. <laughs> And, and if I'm you're looking for it. some trashy, convoluted, semi vampire stories, you can read From Blood and Ash by Jennifer L. Armentrout. Mm-hmm. Yes. That's kind of kind of the be same thing. That up soon. Yeah. I'm I'm at a point with that series where I'm debating just starting from the beginning to read all the way through and start taking like extreme notes. I was thinking about that too. But then I also know that that's a lot and I'm going to be reading Christmas books, so I'm trying to figure it out. I'm going to say don't do it because as we know, and maybe if you don't know, this is my shot my what is PSA. Um JLA likes to go off the rails, and yeah. so what you think is going to be like a trilogy will end up being like six, seven, eight books forever. I personally love that. I can continue reading the same story forever. But if you know anything about how she writes her stories, yeah. like you're going to be rereading a series every year for the rest of time until she decides that she's done. Yeah, and this one's two series wrapped up together, so it's like it could be yeah. ten years. There's from already now. what, like seven books in the yeah. same world and she's not even done. She's not done with either of the series, so no. you're already no. you're already uh committing to seven plus books every single time a new one comes out, and she commits yeah. to two books a year, I think at least. So and they're long. Cause I was I know they're real, they're hella long. Cause I have to read the first Nikdos book, the the last um from Blood and Ash book, and then the second Nikdos book. Yeah. And so I was thinking about going back and rereading the third from Blood and Ash book, and then starting from there, but I don't that know if I want to do that That was kind of what I was thinking. So I read uh, the third one. That's such a big commitment. Read, That's like a billion pages. <laughs> I read A Shadow in the Ember, and that was freaking good. Uh, but I have not read War of Two Queens, so I need to read War of Two Queens, yeah, and I then I need it. to yeah. read The Light and the Flame when it comes That's out. That's the order I need to read them out. in, right? The, yes, I was going to say, you can't, you can't read them in chronological order either, because the right. two timelines are eventually going to connect so at some point, and so if order. you read them... In chronological order, you kind of spoil stuff that's going to happen in the later timeline because it's one of those things where it's like they're talking about characters in the later timeline that you meet in the previous timeline and then you find things out as you go and it's wild. It's convoluted. I am obsessed with it because, you know, I'm trash for JL and anything she I love it. I love it. It's a lot. Yeah. And to be honest, A Shadow in the Ember 
this is my favorite of the whole bunch so far. Uh, but it's also the most recent one I read. So that might be part of it. I might go read War of Two Queens and be like, nope, I love this one more. Nope, I love this one more. I don't know. I just love Nitos a lot. I love it. I'm ready to read it. It's going to happen. Maybe that'll be my Christmas adventure is read War of Two Queens. <laughs> but I think I'm going to read Shadow and the Ember first. I don't know. We'll see. Yeah. But anyway, that is a good vampire yeah. book that everyone should read. The vampire <laughs> series. Vampire. bring it back around. Yeah. But yeah. Vampires and wolves <laughs> and shifters and all that good stuff. Read JLA. Our yeah. favorite. I'm looking at my notes for this book right now, and the amount of times I call Bella an asshole to Charlie is amazing. She is. The amount of times she I write, is. poor Charlie. I feel like we need to take <laughs> pictures of all of your annotations and post them. I mean, honestly. Like, yeah. They're pretty good. I'm not going to lie to you guys. <laughs> I love it. So that way people know that they're real. Like, we're not making up that we yeah. think that Twilight is true. Or even, where is it? There was a part where Edward says something, and I wrote in pretty letters, fuck you. you know. Yeah. <laughs> fuck you. Honestly, let's, <laughs> let's take pictures. Let's take pictures. Send them to it. me, and I'll post them. Okay. Uh, okay. So, everybody, uh, for a game today, I found a BuzzFeed quiz that says this just might be the most difficult Twilight quiz. So we are. I going feel like to, I'm going to be shamefully good at this, I and I'm not proud of really it. I really hope so. And I, I really have hope not I'm looked not at good this at, it. at all, so we are gonna get into it and see what what it is. I have I have no idea, so sorry. Okay. <laughs> Question one. Before moving to Forks, where did Bella live? Phoenix. Yep. Yeah, Arizona. That's easy. Phoenix. Okay. I know. Oh, is it multiple choice? It is multiple choice. Yes. Okay. So, but I, like, if I'm not gonna lie. I'm gonna need all the options. Okay. Like, I don't think I'm gonna be. Able I don't to know. Do if I if we'll I know it, out. I'm gonna say it, and then yeah. if I need the options, <laughs> you can tell That's me. What we'll do. Yeah, I'm gonna lean on Loretta for this. I mean, some of these I know though. Okay, what? <laughs> I'm ready to carry our team. What instrument does Edward play? Piano. Yeah. I mean, it's an option, but yeah, I. What the hell? We're <laughs> like, this is easy. What? Uh, what class did Bella and Edward take together junior year? Biology. Yeah. Science, yeah. Okay. Which vampire was not turned by Carlisle Cullen? Alice. Not no, isn't it Ro- Rosalie? I think it's Rosalie. Or is it Esme? Did he turn his wife? Or just no, Esme kid? was turned okay. as- I'm Esme. I'm pretty sure. He turned Esme. Edward, Esme, Rosalie, and Jasper are the options. I think it's Rosalie. Yeah, I no. think you're right. Um, nope. Oh my gosh. It's, uh, it's Jasper. Oh, he did. He, he turned her for- I was going to say, he turned her for uh, Edward. I knew that. Okay, Alice, Jasper, and Bella are the only members not turned by Carlisle. Bella was turned by Edward, Jasper was turned by Maria, and Alice was turned by an unknown vampire who worked at an asylum. I knew that. I, I didn't know that. I'm sorry for leading us astray. <laughs> I it's thought okay. it was Rosalie, too. I have no idea. Uh, <laughs> what's Edward's favorite animal to hunt? Oh, this is... Uh, mountain lion. It is mountain lion? <laughs> <laughs> Edward prefers lions and Emmett likes to hunt bears. Probably because a bear mauled him when he Why do I human. know this <laughs> off the top of my head? <laughs> oh, I knew this one. Which Muse song plays during the iconic Twilight baseball scene? Super oh, yeah. massive black, yeah. hole. black hole. We all knew that. <laughs> oh, it's got video screenshots of it. That baseball scene should have won an Oscar. Iconic. <laughs> I mean, okay. it should have. <laughs> Isle Esme is off the coast of which city? Oh, um, oh, they fly there for their honeymoon. Yeah. Rio de Janeiro. Rio, Rio. Lima, Punta del Este, or Miramar. Rio. I don't know. Rio de Janeiro? Yeah. Yep. <laughs> yep. If you guys don't want to be friends with me after this, it's, it's okay. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> this is amazing. Uh, who became a werewolf first? Sam, Jared, Paul, or Embry? Sam. Who? I don't know this one. I'm vaguely unclear as to who all these people are. Honestly. Sam did, I think. Sam? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's Sam. <laughs> oh, that's impressive. Honestly. <gasps> What's it called when werewolves change shape? Shape sh- shift? What? Shifting, transforming, phasing, or swapping? Swapping. Swapping. I know Shifting, it's not swapping. right? Why would they call it? I, I know, know the answer because the one before, like, t- uh, accidentally gave it away. So uh, I, yeah. the answer, I don't know. Phasing. Oh. But I, put, I clicked shifting so phasing? that we can check our rules. Okay. According to the books, who did James meet first? Edward, Bella, Alice, or Carlisle? Alice. 
Okay. Who's James? Yeah, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> James is the only James is, bad. Uh, the only James is the guy that guy um, smells Bella and then goes crazy and tries chasing her in the first yeah. book, and then they end up killing uh, him. And then he's mated to Victoria, and that's why. Oh, yeah. uh, okay, 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 okay. Got it. That's why she goes crazy. That's why she gets oh mad. Okay. In the book version of Breaking Dawn, what car did Edward buy Bella after her truck broke down? Uh, I don't know. Something fancy. I want to say an Aston Martin, but I can't remember. Silver Volvo, a Mercedes Guardian, a Ferrari F430, or a BMW M3? Uh, BMW. I don't, I don't know this I don't know. one. I'm, I'm going, going to say BMW. I'm going to say the Ferrari. It's a, it's a Mercedes Guardian. We were both. Oh, in. it's a yeah. fictional car that is basically indestructible. <laughs> oh, here's one for you. Who killed Bree Tanner? Wasn't it the king guy, the vulturi guy? Um, Arrow? Yes. Nope, it's not. <laughs> Felix. Okay. Felix killed oh. her. Oh. Oh yeah. Okay. Uh yeah. Hey, Jane decided one wrong. <laughs> this and Felix executed her. According to Breaking Dawn, how many chromosomes does a vampire have? Oh, God. 24? Uh, 25. Oh, Wait, okay. half vampires have 24. You can Google it. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> it's like a picture of Edward saying you can Google it. Uh, all right. <laughs> According to the books, who was the youngest vampire in the Cullen clan before Bella turned? Who was the youngest? Say that again. Uh, okay. The youngest vampire in the Cullen clan before Bella turned. Esme, Alice, Emmett, Emmet? or Rosalie? I think it's Rosalie. Emmett, but I'm not sure. No, yeah, not Rosalie. I think it's Emmett. It's Emmett. It is Emmett. He was turned in yeah. 1935. Yeah, I got one right. <laughs> you did it. <laughs> mauled by a bear. In New Moon, which Cullen voted against Bella becoming a vampire? Rosalie. Yeah, so that one's easy, right? Okay. When Jacob Black became the alpha of his own pack, who became his beta or the second in command? Quill, Seth, Seth Leah, or Embry? I think it was Seth. I, I, no I was idea. gonna say Leah. I was gonna say Leah, but it's Seth or Leah. Leah. I I think it's Seth. Uh, it's Leah. Yep. Okay. Woo! I got nice. <laughs> Okay. In Eclipse, who finally killed Victoria? Edward does. Edward? I think so. Yep, he did. Because Bella like Bella slices distracted her arm Victoria off. Victoria by cutting her own arm, and then Edward rips Victoria apart. What was the name of Rosalie's fiance? Oh, um. Uh, Royce. Oh my gosh. You did know that. Wow, that was really impressive, honestly. Uh, Why do I know this? That was really, I am impressive. Okay. I'm so embarrassed. <laughs> the, the, the speed with which you got Royce is uh, uh, 10 out of 10. Uh, okay. Who drove the van that almost hits Bella? Oh, um. Mike, Eric, uh, Tyler, or Quill? Tyler. Tyler? Yep, Tyler. Okay, this is done. Okay, it says, you know your stuff, but it's been a while. Listen, you've definitely seen the movies and read most of the books. You probably dropped out around the time Breaking Dawn was released, and honestly, who can blame you? You're a bit rusty, but you still know way more about Twilight than most of the population. Ten out of ten. That, that, was, out. that was That does <laughs> check out. That sounds wonderful. That's it, yeah. Okay. They know me. Good times. Thank you, BuzzFeed, for that piece of trivia. We needed that. <laughs> going, I'm going to curl yeah. up in a ball and shame and after we need to log off. I mean, probably just need to go watch them again. It'll be fine. I kind of want to annotate my other books because I only reread the first one. So, like, maybe I need to reread the rest. Take in them for the team because I don't have the time or energy or desire for that one. But. Nope. Uh, yeah. So. Okay. I think we are all done with our wonderful Twilight adventure. Thank you all for joining us. And follow us on socials, on Instagram, and... At Emo Girls Guide. All those things. And may your day be blessed with main character energy. Main, main character, character energy. energy. Yay.